Hi, I'm Katie Souza, and you're watching Healing Your Soul, Real Keys to the Miraculous. Did you know that what you allow into your imagination could stop God's miraculous power from flowing in your life? It's the same with your emotions. If you let your emotions get out of control, it can shut down an actual gate in your soul and prevent God's healing power from flowing into your life, then stop you from getting your breakthrough. Believe it or not, your imagination and emotions are just two examples of the many gates that are in your soul, man. Just like there are gates in your physical body, like your eye gate or your ear gate, there are gates in your soul that when you sin will close those gates down to receiving the promises and the power of God. When you allow your imagination to picture evil or your emotions to rule over you, then it's just like a water dam. When the people close the gates in a dam, it stops the water from flowing. When you close your soul and your body gates down by participating in sin, then it will stop the living waters that are inside of you from moving in your life. Here's a simple example. There was a season when I was allowing myself to watch movies with foul language in them. I noticed that after a while, it was becoming very hard for me to hear the voice of God, which I so desperately needed to lead me through issues and problems in my life. That's when the Lord reminded me that I had allowed unclean words to enter into my ear gate, and it had closed down that gate so I could not hear his voice. Once I repented of that sin, stopped watching those movies, then commanded my ear gate to be opened, the living waters inside my spirit flowed into those gates, and I was able to hear life-changing direction from the Lord. Immediately, I received the guidance I needed to get healed of a sickness I was battling with, hear the strategy I needed to receive massive financial blessings for my personal life and for our television outreach. And I even got more specific words of knowledge in my meetings that produced amazing miracles and healings for the people that were attending. Today, we're gonna talk about these gates that are in your body and your soul and learn how to open them up so that God's healing power can flow into every area of your life and bring you total breakthrough. Let's join our conference now. The third reason that you may not be seeing the fullness of what you have, doing those power inside of you, manifesting in your life is because I believe there could be blocks that are stopping the flow of that power, and those blocks are in your soul and your physical body. Listen to what Jesus said in John 7. This is verse 38. He says, He who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. Jesus is saying here that there's power in your innermost being. It, it acts like springs of living water, and it will flow, quote, continuously from your inner being out. You know what that is, don't you? Those springs of living water are dunamis. They're dunamis resurrection power that lives in your inner man, your spirit man. You know, it's funny because the word living water there means power that exerts itself upon the soul. So that living water is soul healing power, which means it's i.e. dunamis, because dunamis makes you excellent of soul. So Jesus is talking about doing his power here, flowing forth from your innermost being continuously, everybody say continuously, like springs of living water. Okay, so this is a promise. This is from the Lord's mouth himself that we'll have continuous flow of dunamis power. Now, if that's true, then we should always be getting he healed in our soul. We should always be getting healed in our body and not sick. We should always be having financial increase because those are all the things that dunamis does for us and it does even more, okay? But we're not, are we? But yet Jesus said that power that causes those things to happen in our life would flow continuously. Everybody say continuously from our innermost being. So what's the problem? Do you think Jesus is a liar? Exactly. Absolutely not. So there must be something blocking the flow, eh? If we're not seeing it continuously moving through our life and producing excellence of soul and healing in our bodies and all of that. I mean, you do remember what the scripture, right, in Romans, 
And Romans 8 says about the spirit that it, it says, but the, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, what's that? Resurrection due to his power, right? He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit that dwells in you. See, according to this scripture and, and the other scriptures, I mean, that dunamis power, those springs of living water that are flowing continuously from your innermost being are even supposed to quicken your mortal body. Is your, is your mortal body being quickened every day? How come? Because it says it would. It says our bodies will be quickened. How come they're not? There must be a block in the flow. There must be a block in the flow. Where's that block coming from? I believe that there are gates and doors in our soul and body that when shut down, prevent the dunamis from flowing out of our spirit man into and through our soul, then into our mortal body to quicken it, and then out us onto other people. Have you ever read Psalm 24? The Psalm talks about commanding ancient gates in the temple to be lifted up. I'll just read the scripture really fast. Psalm 24, 7 says, lift up your heads, O you gates, be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory will come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you ancient gates, lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. So here's the scripture, and repeatedly, it's commanding ancient gates in the temple to be lifted up. Now, if you look up the word gates and doors in that verse, in that scripture, it refers to the gates and doors in the temple. Back then, the temple was a building, right? That housed the presence of the Lord, right? Where's the temple now that houses the presence of the Lord? That's right. We are the temple, and we have the presence of the Lord in us, which indicates that there are ancient gates and doors in our temple that need to be lifted up so the king of glory can come in. Amen? We have gates in our body, gates in our soul. Think about the body gates. Eye gate, ear gate, mouth gate, nose gate, touch or senses gate, right? We all say that all the time, don't we? We all acknowledge that we have body gates, don't we? Well, we also have soul gates. There are gates that lead to your mind, to your subconscious mind, to your imagination, to your reasoning, to your memories, to your will, to your emotions. Now, do I have proof of that? If you look up the word gate in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, it means this. Listen, to reason out, to calculate, to reckon, to estimate. Where do you reason? In your mind, right? Where do you calculate? Where do you reckon? Where do you estimate? What's your mind? It's part of your soul. See, the word gates actually means to reckon, to estimate, to calculate. Where do you do all that? In your mind. There are gates to your mind. There are gates in your soul realm. Gates that lead to all the different parts of your soul. Just like there are eye gates and ear gates and all that, there are gates that lead to the imagination, to your memories, to your passions, to your desires. And if those gates are closed down, then the power, the rivers of living water that flow continuously from your spirit will not be able to penetrate into every part of your soul and make you excellent soul and then go into your body to quicken your mortal body. It's just like a dam. If there's, you know how they have gates and doors in a dam? And when they shut them, what happens? The water in the dam stops flowing. Did you hear me? When the doors and gates in a dam are closed, the water in the dam stops flowing. See, this is why Psalm 24 commands us to tell our ancient gates, be ye lifted up so the king of glory can come in. Remember, those ancient gates were in the temple, and we are the temple now. Amen? And we need to start commanding our ancient gates to be lifted up so the king of glory can come in, so the dunamis power, the spirit of Christ himself, because we have Christ in us, the hope of glory, can flow out of our spirit man into and through every part of our soul, into and through our body, flowing outwards, it says, from our innermost being, and then out on other people. Remember, Jesus said it would, that those springs of living water would flow forth 
flow forth from your innermost being. There's like a, a pattern, a, a path. Spirit, it flows out of the spirit. It flows forth into the soul. It makes it excellent. Then it flows forth into the body to quicken it. Then it flows forth out your body onto other people. Are you with me? When I was on the streets, I terrorized people so much that when I got arrested, nobody wanted me to get out. Be honest with yourself. Have you ever thought that all those people in prison should just stay there? Well, I was one of them. Yet God so radically transformed me that now I'm changing the world. Guess what? He has the same plan in mind for them. Let's make it happen together. Call now. And when you do, Katie would like to thank you for your gift by sending you a copy of her teaching In the Midst, along with a bonus soul-soaking CD with Janie Duvall. With your gift of $50 or more, you will have a part in putting God's Word directly into the hands of a life that is ready to change. Call toll-free 1-800-789-7895. And as a thank you for your gift, Katie will send you a copy of In the Midst along with a bonus soul-soaking CD. Did you know that most of the sickness and lack you're dealing with right now are from ancient soul wounds passed down through your bloodline? You're born with stuff. In this teaching, I show you how to get rid of it. Disc four of this CD set is one of the most powerful soul soakers I've ever produced. I personally soak to it and I get a breakthrough every time. Call now with your gift, 1-800-789-7895. Help Katie reach out to thousands of prisoners with a powerful message of God's ultimate healing power. What would close those gates down? Traumas you've lived through. Sins you've experienced. Sins that have been committed against you. Sins you've committed. Sins your ancestors committed. Think about it. Ever gone through a horrible trauma? And afterwards... Certain parts of your soul will feel oppressed, won't they? Your mind will start racing. Your emotions will be depressed, oppressed, tormented, right? And you'll feel like nothing you can do quite breaks through. You keep on being tormented in your mind. You keep on feeling this horrible feeling in your emotions. What's happened? The gates, that trauma you lived through, slammed the gates down. And it prevented the dunamis power that's in you from getting into that place to quicken and to make you excellent of soul. Think about it. Think about what's happened at your gates. I mean, even sin at the gate shuts a gate down. You know, if you watch pornography, what happens? That's that, those evil images enter into your eye gate, right? Because you're watching pornography. They enter into your imagination gate, your memory gate. Then you can recall those images whenever you want because they're burned into your soul. All right, and then what happens? That sin shuts down the gate. And then when you have this conviction, I got to stop watching this porn, man. It's ruining my life. It's ruining my marriage, whatever else it's doing. And you try to stop. You know, they say stopping uh, being addicted to pornography is one of the hardest things to do. Why? Because that gate's been shut by sin and the dunamis power. And believers watch pornography, believe me. A lot of them do. But see, that sin shut down the gates and now the dunamis that's in them can't flow like a river of living water continuously to that place to remove those images from their memory, to remove those images from their eye gate, to remove those images from their mind so they're being controlled by them and they can't get away from it. They got to open those gates so the power can get in there and heal them and then they'll be able to break free. What are you letting in your eye gate? What are you letting in your ear gate? What are you letting yourself listen to? Gossip, you know, a bad report, fear. What are you letting out your mouth gate? Offense, judgmental, criticism. What are you letting in your imagination gate? What are you picturing in your mind? You know, if you're, if you're consistently doing something like complaining or grumbling or, or imagining evil against somebody that you are struggling with or having a battle with, then that sin can close down the gates to that area of your soul. Are you with me? So how do we open them? Well, we don't. Jesus does. And I'm going to show you how he opened the very first gate inside of us. And now all we need to do is follow his example to open the rest. Okay? Let me explain to you how it happened. We're going to start by looking at a, at a model of the very first temple. It's the tabernacle in the desert. It's three parts, basically. The Holy of Holies was where the ark was kept. That's where the presence of the Lord lived, right? Then the holy place 
is where they had the menorah and the showbread and everything else. Then they had the outer court, okay? Now, notice that this is a three-part construction, which is exactly how the temple today is built. We are the temple. Okay, now let's see that. There we are. We're built just like the original building. We got three parts too. Okay, we've got a body, which is, corresponds to the outer court. We've got a soul, which corresponds to the holy place. And we've got a spirit, which corresponds to the holy of holies, where the presence of the Lord lives. Amen? Are you with me? Okay, now, check this out. What does this have to do with gates? Do you remember what was hanging in between the holy place and the holy of holies in the temple? You see it? A veil, right? A veil. So the veil was hanging in between those two areas. The holy place where the presence of the Lord was and the most holy. I mean, the most holy place where the presence of the Lord was and the holy place. What happened to that veil when Jesus died on the cross? It was ripped. It was ripped I mean, right in half, right? Boom. This is a big, thick veil. I think it was like six inches thick, 60 feet tall. This was a huge veil. Now, guess what? When that happened there, then, okay, let's go to uh, the, the person now on the illustration. I think it's number four. The same thing happened. Okay, see? Jesus ripped the veil in the temple. It's now gone. And guess what happens when we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior in us? There was a veil inside us. See it? It was this block between the spirit and the soul. But when Jesus died, the veil was removed in our temple. Just like the veil was ripped in this temple that was in between the most holy place and the holy place, there was a veil in us between our spirit and our soul that got ripped away too. Now, is that in the Bible? Are you with me? So the veil was removed both in the building temple and in the real temple now. Okay? Now, is that in the Bible? It is. Watch. Are you still with me? The veil in us was removed when, G when we received Jesus as Lord and Savior and received the work he did on the cross and the blood he shed just like the veil was removed in the temple. Here's the proof. There's many proofs. This is from 2 Corinthians 3, verse 16. It says, but whenever a person turns in repentance to the Lord, the veil is stripped off and taken away. See, there was a veil in between our spirit and our soul, just like there was a veil in between the most holy place and the holy place. But when a person turns in repentance towards the Lord, like the scripture says, the veil is taken away. So what's the big deal? See, if that never happened, when you received Jesus as Lord and the Holy Spirit came in you and brought dunamis power with him into your spirit, man, if the veil had never been removed, then all that dunamis resurrection power would have been trapped inside your most holy place, trapped inside your spirit, man. If it was trapped in there, then it could never get out and flow like a river of living water continuously falling, flowing forth from your belly. So Jesus had to rip the veil. So he did. So that means all that goody, yummy, yummy, yummy power inside your spirit can now get out. It can get out and it can flow forth like a river of living water from your spirit into your soul and into the rest of your body. Did you hear what I said? Now listen, here's, here's proof of this. Watch. This is also from 2 Corinthians. It says, after it says, but whenever a person turns in repentance to the Lord, the veil is taken away. And then in verse 18, it says this. Now, all of us with unveiled faces, meaning the veil has been removed because we've turned to Christ, are constantly being transformed into his own image from glory to glory. You see, because Jesus <laughs> ripped the veil between the spirit and the soul it allows the dunamis resurrection power to flow out of the spirit, and then we are transformed into his image, into his likeness, from glory to glory, because we now are having unveiled faces. Yeah. Are you understanding me? I'm trying to teach you how things work. Our soul is able to be transformed into his image, into his likeness, because the veil was removed. 
If the veil had stayed in our temple, the power in us would have been trapped in our spirit. But because it's been removed, it can flow out into the rest of us. Did you know that Hebrews 6 says that because Jesus ripped the veil, it's the hope and anchor for our soul? That's because the removal of this first gate in your temple enables the power that's in your spirit, man, to flow out into your inner man to heal you and make you excellent of soul. I remember a man at one of my meetings who was swollen, greasy, and gray looking because bile was backing up in his body. In fact, his situation was so bad, he was going to die. His cousin convinced him to come to one of my meetings. And while I was teaching on the ancient gates, I walked over on the stage and I stood in front of him and commanded his gates to be lifted up. Instantly, I saw this vision of an old gate being lifted up from the ground up and living water rushing through it. When I glanced down at him, he had this shocked look on his face. He told me that he had just seen a vision of a gate literally lifting up and water pouring through it. See, God had showed him the exact same vision he had shown me. Now, within 24 hours, he lost 16 pounds of bile weight and then 16 more pounds in the next two weeks that followed. He was so healed that he was even able to return to his job in the oil fields. Later on, his cousin told me that that moment was the highlight of his life all that year. And it happened when an ancient gate inside his soul was lifted up and the dunamis power that was inside of him flowed like rivers of living water into his inner man and into his body to give him a miracle. Jesus used his blood to rip the veil. So now let's follow his example and apply his blood to every gate in our temple so that they can be lifted up. Okay, just sit right there and I'm going to make decrees while you receive, okay? Ready? I decree Jesus died for every sin that ever took place at any of your gates. The Bible says your sin is already under the blood and that you're already forgiven. So now I decree your gates are slathered with the blood of Jesus and all your sin that happened at those gates is wiped out. I put the blood of Jesus on the gates to your subconscious mind, your conscious mind, your memory, your intellect, your reasoning, your imagination, your will, your emotions, and your desires. I decree every single gate in your soul is being washed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I also put the blood on every gate in your body, your eye gate, your ear gates, your nose gate, your mouth gate, and your touch gate. Jesus already shed his blood to wash you clean of every sin that's ever happened at any of those gates. And his blood is on your body gates right now. So by faith, receive the truth of this word. Now, I command those gates, be lifted up. Just like Psalm 24 instructs us to do. I say, lift up you heads, O you ancient gates. I command you, be lifted up, O you everlasting doors, so the king of glory can come in. Okay, did you feel that? Okay, now we're going to say it together. Ready? Lift up your heads. Say it strongly. O you ancient gates, be ye lifted up. Come on, command them. Ye everlasting doors. So the king of glory can come in. Did you feel that? All right, I hear it moving. Let's do it one more time together. You ready? Ready? Lift up you heads. Say it with strength. Ready? O you ancient gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, so the king of glory can come in. Whew. Say it one more time. So the king of glory can come in. All right. Now say in Jesus' name, amen. Wow. <laughs> wow. Now just receive these decrees as I speak them over you. Ready? 
I command the dunamis power that's inside of you to flow like rivers of living water into every single one of your gates to heal you right now. I decree you will feel your pain leave now. Your mind will get quiet. Your vision will improve. Your seer vision will be activated. Your hearing in the natural will be healed. And your ability to hear God's voice is being opened up right now in Jesus' name. I decree full healing for you of every single issue you're dealing with at every single gate. Whew, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, now I want you to check yourself. Check yourself. Okay, move around. Sense how you feel inside your soul. Sense how your body feels. I bet you'll find something exciting has happened to you. Pain will be gone. You'll be able to hear better. You'll feel more peaceful inside yourself. If something happened, you need to contact us. You need to give us your testimony. If it hasn't happened yet, don't worry. Keep on applying the power of the cross and dunamis power to all your gates. We'll be right back. When I was on the streets, I terrorized people so much that when I got arrested, nobody wanted me to get out. Be honest with yourself. Have you ever thought that all those people in prison should just stay there? Well, I was one of them. Yet God so radically transformed me that now I'm changing the world. Guess what? He has the same plan in mind for them. Let's make it happen together. Call now. And when you do, Katie would like to thank you for your gift by sending you a copy of her teaching In the Midst, along with a bonus soul-soaking CD with Janie Duvall. With your gift of $50 or more, you will have a part in putting God's Word directly into the hands of a life that is ready to change. Call toll-free 1-800-789-7895. And as a thank you for your gift, Katie will send you a copy of In the Midst along with a bonus soul-soaking CD. Did you know that most of the sickness and lack you're dealing with right now are from ancient soul wounds passed down through your bloodline? You're born with stuff. In this teaching, I show you how to get rid of it. Disc four of the CD set is one of the most powerful soul soakers I've ever produced. I personally soak to it and I get a breakthrough every time. Call now with your gift, 1-800-789-7895. Help Katie reach out to thousands of prisoners with a powerful message of God's ultimate healing power. Now that your gates are open, keep them open. Keep your imagination clean. If you listen to something foul, put the blood on your ears to keep those gates open. If you blow it and yell at someone, repent right away. Keep all your gates open with the blood so that the living waters will flow continuously from your innermost being into every part of your life. Be blessed. See you next time.